Marine harvesters along the east coast of South Africa rely on the ocean as a source of food and income. It is not only the commercial and recreational fishermen who take from the sea, but also rural subsistence harvesters who walk the rocky shores at low tide, diving into the pools and channels, often risking big waves and strong currents. Besides the different species of fish, the three most common species targeted along the Eastern Cape Coast are the Cape Rock Oyster, the East Coast Rock Lobster, and the Brown Mussel. These three species are under pressure, with vast numbers being taken from the sea every year. Unless sustainable harvesting practices and rehabilitation projects are put in place, the rocks will soon be stripped barren. But before we investigate how this can be done, we must first understand the biology of each of these species, their life cycles, distribution and eating habits. To gain an appreciation of the importance of these species in the greater ecosystem. The Cape Rock Oyster is a commercially and recreationally harvested species and can be found all along the East Coast. Oysters need a similar habitat to mussels. Both live at depths of 5 to 10 meters where they live on rocks using seaweed growth and byssus threads to keep them attached to the rock. Both oysters and mussels are bivalves, meaning they have two shells which are split into valves that enclose the main body. The shells support the soft inner tissue, protect them from predators and prevent them from drying out. The Cape Rock Oyster has a lower valve shaped like a cup and is the largest of the oysters indigenous to South Africa. If you open an oyster, it may appear as just a slimy substance, but it actually consists of very important parts of its anatomy. Mental sensory tentacles are used for sensing any changes in its surrounding environment. The gills filter the water that is passed through the inhalant chamber. The abductor muscle is used to open and close the shell, regulating the inflow of water and the visceral mass consists of the internal organs like the stomach and the intestines. When they feed, water enters through the inhalant chamber. This passes through the gills, the visceral mass, and finally through the exhalant chamber. Food is removed from the water as it passes through, which is why they are referred to as filter feeders. The brown mussel is another commonly harvested bivalve. They are found in colonies attached to the rocks in the exposed wave crash zone from the mid into tidal area to a few meters underwater. It is here on the rocks that mussels are able to get food and oxygen from the waves flowing over them. They provide food not only for humans but also for other natural predators like birds and fish and they help create an environment that is suitable for other species to thrive. For example, the red and green seaweed, which grows next to the mussels, which is a rich source of food for alicrecal. Both oysters and mussels share very similar life cycles. The male releases sperm cells into the water, and the female, in turn, releases her eggs. The sperm cells fertilize the eggs in the water, forming tiny little larvae, which swim around in the water for about two to three weeks, transforming over time. For oysters, these larvae will attach themselves to rock as an oyster spat and it will be two to three years before they mature. Mussel larvae will attach onto a hard surface and start growing. It takes six months to mature and only then can they start reproducing and the mussel life cycle starts all over again. It is important that mussels are found in clumps or colonies with males and females close together. Clamping also protects the young mussels as they grow into adulthood by holding them firm against the waves. They are filter feeders, so their anatomy resembles that of an oyster. They have a foot that allows them limited movement on the rocks. They have two inhalant and exhalant chambers which allows water and waste to flow in and out of the mussel for feeding, breathing and excretion. Water is siphoned into the large gills 
which act like a sieve. These gills collect oxygen and food from the water. Mussels feed on plankton and other microscopic creatures that float in seawater. Mussels, along with limpets and other small marine animals, are an important food source for the Eastern Cape rock lobster, otherwise known as crayfish. Crayfish are highly sought after, especially in the Chonskai area where they are sold to tourists. They are found in the warm waters along the east coast all the way up to Kenya. They live in holes and crevices along rocky shore areas. They have a hot brick red exterior shell with orange spines and blue-green markings on the head. They are long tails and in a fan-like shape. This is used to propel it rapidly to cover. They use their antenna to protrude from their shelter and are directed to any moving object. It is this that divers are looking out for. They also have strong legs, enabling them to cling to rocks under turbulent conditions. If either the antenna or the legs break off, they grow back but at a slower rate. Breeding occurs in the summer when the season is closed. The male lobster places a packet of sperm in the underbelly of the female. When the female is ready to lay eggs, she scratches open the packet to release the sperm and the eggs become fertilized. The eggs develop in the tail of the lobster before they are released into the sea. The larvae will then drift in ocean currents for 12 to 15 months. In this time, they will undergo 11 transformations. They will then settle onto the rocky seafloor, turning into young lobsters about 5 centimeters long. Adult rock lobsters will grow for 7 to 10 years before becoming sexually mature. This is why government tries to limit catching to within a specific season to give them a chance to breed. So, crayfish, mussels and oysters play a vital role in the rocky shore ecosystem and many other species rely on their abundance for survival. If these three species are to continue to thrive in South African waters, the replenishment of populations are vital. People are taking large numbers out of the sea and they need to be given a chance to rejuvenate and repopulate. For crayfish, this means there must be no harvesting during the closed season, which is during the summer months from November 1st to end of February. For all three species, it is important that the small ones are left to grow. For mussels and crayfish, there are size and catch limits that must be followed. Anything smaller than 5 cm must be left alone. No more than 30 mussels per day per person must be harvested. For crayfish, the carapace, which excludes the tail and antenna, must be longer than 65 mm. A maximum of 8 crayfish per day is the legal limit. Proper harvesting practices are also vital. Using large blunt instruments or spades to take mussels will remove everything off the rocks, including both young and old mussels, and other organisms and seaweed. So it is better to use smaller instruments, like a screwdriver, to be more selective about what is taken off the rocks. Poor harvesting methods have resulted in extensive damage to mussel beds the rocks are being covered by a mat of coralline algae that supports only small groups of mussels. This makes the need for rehabilitation projects even greater. There are cost-effective ways of doing this, the most prominent using sections of PVC drainage pipe. Small mussels, perhaps the bycatch from harvesting the bigger ones, are placed under the half pipe which is screwed into the rock. An entire rocky outcrop can be used for the project. After a month, the mussels will have secured themselves to the rock and after a year, they will be ready for harvesting. There are many rocky shores along our east coast that are slowly becoming devoid of all life as the human impact of harvesting becomes too much for the ecosystems to handle. These kinds of rehabilitation projects are the answer to regenerating the rocky shores and supporting the rural communities who rely on marine harvesting for survival. We need to have an understanding of the different species and their important roles in the ecosystem and this 
Together with the knowledge on correct harvesting methods is the key to protecting our beautiful coastline.